Making green or non-green hydrogen, which is actually over 90% of the world's hydrogen production right now, it's made by simply burning fossil fuels. It's not efficient either way. If you use renewables or you use, you use fossil fuels to make hydrogen, it's really not an efficient process. However, researchers at Oregon State University have figured out a way to make hydrogen that actually does make sense. I mean, if we could do this at a mass level, in other words, if we could mass manufacture hydrogen all over the world using this process, I would change my tune about hydrogen cars. I'd be saying, you know what? They actually make sense. But that's a big if. Now, here's the story. Here's what's going on. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking, guys. I've just had a big a big uh, solar system, a new one put on my house, replaced an old one. It's um, often not worth keeping old ones. Anyhow, this new system's amazing. And the company that installed it, they, um, I've got to say, huge credit to them. I'm amazed by their professionalism. They're probably the best business that I've ever had been involved with in any, in any industry ever in, in my life. I just want to put a shout out there to Resync Solar. And if you want to know more about those guys, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, they guys, they contacted me. They said, um, if you, or they, when we actually installed the solar, they said, we'll pay you a, we'll pay you a commission for every person you refer to us. And I said, no, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. You guys have helped me out. And so basically I said, no, if you're going to give anyone a commission, give it to the guys, click, give it to you guys, click on the link, give them a discount. They're like, yeah, okay, no worries. We'll do that. So I don't make anything from this. Um, there's a link in the description below. This, these guys have better reviews than any other solar company in America or Australia. Anyhow, they're unfortunately not in America yet, but they are planning on potentially um, maybe even setting up in America as well, their CEO has told me. So yeah, if you're going to install a new solar system in Australia, guys, you know, click on that link below and just check them out. You just put out the feelers and then let me know what, you're, what you think about it because I've spoken to other people and they're just blown away by the experience. Anyhow, a material that converts sunlight and water into clean energy has been developed by scientists. The photocatalyst created by researchers at Oregon State University enables high-speed, high-efficiency production of hydrogen. The collaboration led by Kyriakos Stilenau, oh, I've done how to pronounce that name, sorry guys, of the OSU College of Science represented the potential new tool to use against greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. The research focuses on crystalline porous materials known as metal organic frameworks, usually abbreviated as MOFs. So how does this all work? Well, in the study, researchers used an MOF to derive a metal oxide heterojunction a combination of two materials with complementary properties to make a catalyst that when exposed to sunlight quickly and efficiently splits water into hydrogen. It's the splitting water into, into hydrogen that is the really costly energy expensive process. And really that's the part that makes it hydrogen kind of theoretically not make sense for a lot of really, it, it will make more sense once we have, um, you know, what Tony Sieber talks about, which is superpower, which we will have superpower. It's, I don't think anyone argues against that. What that means is when you build out renewables, you need approximately 200% capacity because it's putting you in a position to um, ensure that when there's no sun and no wind, it's rare, but it happens, you'll still have enough energy. So that means that about 90% of the time, you don't need all this excess power. This excess, so that, that's essentially what people are planning on doing, using that excess power to create hydrogen. The question is, is this better? than using this uh, excess renewable energy power. It could be. In the study, researchers used an MOF to actually, they say very cost efficiently, um, create what is really green hydrogen. The heterojunction, which they refer to as RTTA, features MOF derived ruthenium oxide and titanium oxide doped with sulfur and nitrogen. They tested multiple RTTAs with different amounts of the oxides and found a clear winner, according to the Oregon State University. Among various RTTA materials, RTTA1 with the lowest ruthenium oxide content exhibited the fastest hydrogen production rate and a high quantum yield. So the yield was key here. And that's what the researchers were saying. The yield, I mean, this guys, there's a lot of different methods that people are kind of using to try and uh, change the way we are able to get hydrogen, create hydrogen, but the yield is often low. In this case, though, it wasn't. In just one hour, a gram of RTTA1 was able to produce 10,700 micromoles of hydrogen. This process utilizes photons, which are light particles, at an impressive rate of 10%, meaning that for every 100 photons that struck the RTTA1, 
10 contributed to hydrogen production, according to the study, a really, really high efficiency. The remarkable activity of RTTA1 is because of the synergistic effects of the metal oxides properties and surface properties from the parent MOF that enhance electron transfer, they said. This study highlights the potential of this method as a photocatalyst for practical hydrogen production, contributing to the development of sustainable and energy efficient energy solutions. So the researchers said that hydrogen production by splitting water via a catalytic process is cleaner than the traditional method of deriving hydrogen from natural gas via a carbon dioxide producing process known as methane steam reforming. That's how about 92% of the world's hydrogen currently is produced. Currently, hydrogen production from water involves electrocatalysis running electricity through the catalyst. The sustainability of this method depends on using renewable energy, though, and to be competitive in the market, the energy has to be cheap, according to the study. So these guys are factoring in the competition, which is renewable energy. Water is an abundant source of hydrogen, and photocatalysis offers a method to harness the Earth's abundant solar energy for hydrogen production. Ruthenium oxide is not cheap. That's the one drawback here. But the amount used in the photocatalyst is very small. For industrial applications, if a catalyst shows good stability and reproducibility, the cost of this small amount of ruthenium oxide is fairly insignificant. Now, currently, methane steam reforming produces hydrogen at a cost of around $1.50 per kilogram, compared to $5 a kilogram for green hydrogen. So you can see green hydrogen, that's why it's not produced. It's way too expensive to manufacture. So really, when you know Toyota tells you at the Olympics, look, our cars are green, green hydrogen, the chances of them running on green hydrogen are about one in a million. There's almost, almost no chance you'd be able to buy green hydrogen from a pump anywhere. I don't know of any um, pumping stations in the world that actually will sell you green hydrogen. If they were, you'd be paying at least three times the price. And hydrogen is actually already quite an expensive fuel when it comes to powering trucks and cars. Photocatalytic hydrogen production offers an alternative pathway to establish a sustainable hydrogen energy economy. And I actually think this could work. While numerous photoactive materials exhibit potential for generating hydrogen from water, the synergy achieved by combining two different materials with complementary properties in the form of heterojunctions can significantly boost their photocatalytic activity. In my opinion though, when it comes to transportation, I think the boat is sailed, guys. I don't think it matters that this method does work for hydrogen production. I think EVs are just too far advanced and it will take so long for hydrogen. It, it, does, it can't catch up. But I do see this being used for many other purposes, for manufacturing, for steel production, for things like shipping, heavy industry shipping. That's where this would make a huge amount of sense. You would not need a massive battery. You probably still would have a small battery pack in a ship, but it would be like a hydrogen fuel cell, potentially. In that scenario, hydrogen would be able to get rid of the enormous amounts of um, you know very polluting diesel particularly is used in shipping uh, that is really one of the worst absolute worst emissions you can think of and this would this would be a situation where hydrogen would make perfect sense guys what are your thoughts do you agree with me do you disagree let me know what you think in the comments thanks for watching